Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is stop listening for input. Let's go ahead and run through our example, and you're not actually going to notice anything happening here. I can run around, I can jump, I can pull up my pause menu, and I can run around and jump. So, really simple example that really doesn't show anything. But the note is stop listening for input action and stop listening for all input actions. And what I've done, if I unconnect it and run our example again, and I hit pause, our character can't jump. So what this note does is allow us to listen again for the normal controller input and to ignore any overrides that we have created. So let's see how this works. The stop listening for input action and stop listening for all input action nodes are part of the user widget input. If we type in stop listening, we're going to find them under input. Stop listening for our appropriate node. And you'll notice they will only work inside of a user widget. If I try them inside of my character, you'll find they don't show up even if context sensitivity is checked or unchecked. That's because these only work inside of user widgets. Now these are intended to go along with our listen for input action node, and that is covered in a separate video. But to summarize and to quickly go through what that does, listen for input action will listen to any of our input actions under project settings, jumping, pausing, action button interact. These are ones I've set up. We can listen to those and do something inside of our widget based on what happens. In this case, I'm listening for the jump button and I'm doing nothing. I'm basically consuming the input, not allowing the player to jump, and I'm telling the player not to do anything as well. If we use our stop listening for input action node, we are going to give it a target, which is going to be the self, because that's the user widget we're calling this in, and it's going to ask for an action name. By default, it's going to be none. We're going to go ahead and type in jump in this example, and we will go ahead and then set up the event type. What are we stopping listening for? In our listen for, we can choose the event type that we're listening for, pressed, released, and other options. Stop listening needs a specific version to stop listening for. We could set up something to happen when we press it and set up something when we release it. We could then stop listening at a later point to only one of those event types. In this case, we're gonna set it up where we're stopping listening for when we press it, because that's what's stopping our consume input to run. So that's why I said when we ran our example, it's kind of silly because nothing's really happening. Technically what's happening is we are listening for the jump input and then immediately stop listening for it. Now here is where the difference is between these two nodes. Let me unhook the stop listening and plug in the stop listening for all input actions. Now this node itself is set up to listen for the pause button and listen for the jump button. When I run this traditionally and I go ahead and hit pause, we can't jump. I hit pause again and our menu closes. When I tell it to stop listening for all input actions and run this again, we're going to go ahead and bring up our pause menu. We can jump, but the pause menu can now no longer close. Because I've told it to stop listening for any input actions that I have a set up inside of this widget. So that's important to note the distinction. You have a specific version you wish to stop listening to, or everything you wish to stop listening to. Now uses for this is if you wish to override something temporarily, or maybe inside of a submenu. Let's say for example the you have a menu and you have character rebinding. You also have navigation inside of there. Let's say you have a Q key and an E key on your screen that can go back and forth between multiple tabs. However, when you're rebinding your keys and you need to allow the character to, or the player, to push a key on their keyboard to rebind, you may be overriding that input by listening. So you may wish to stop listening for input on all the buttons, let your rebinding menu handle itself appropriately because you want it to consume everything, and then once it's done, you can go and rebind your listening to maybe your new actions or things like that. 
That's something to keep in mind when you need to stop listening after you've already set up a listening node. That is going to wrap up our stop listening for input action nodes.